Assalamualaikum and a very good uh, morning to all the participants of uh, International Meta IoT Challenge 2021. Uh, I welcome all participants to this challenge where uh, Meta Project and collaborators uh, challenge university students to come up with uh, in IoT innovation using the Internet of Things, robotics, and AI to come up with a solution for the mangrove ecosystem. Uh, first of all, uh, as we know, the registration deadline has passed, which is the, the 31st October 2021, and we have come to uh, the next phase, which is the training phase. And uh, for the training, we have uh, several parts for the training, uh, including IoT, robotics uh, for the mangrove ecosystem, biodiversity, and also social economics. And today, uh, you have come here for the training on the IoT part, uh, which will be conducted by Professor I.R. Aduati Sali. And uh, without further ado, I pass uh, the training to the uh, speaker, which is Professor. I stop sharing. Okay, uh, thank you, Aisha. Let me just share my screen. So you can see it, eh? You can see the screen? Yes. Uh, Good morning. So this is this um, introduction to the IoT as part of the um, IoT um, International Meta IoT Challenge, and we are looking into um, the theme of IoT robotics and AI in the topics of uh, mangrove ecosystem. Yeah, uh, especially in biodiversity, water quality, and social economics. So um, currently we are in the training part here, yeah, which is on the which will start on the 1st of November. So this is a recorded version. Uh, so hopefully you can get some ideas on how um, IoT is being used for um, environmental monitoring. So um, oops, the IoT described as the, <laughs> hold on, eh? I'm just trying to, describes the um, physical objects or things that are embedded with uh, sensors, software, and other technologies for the purpose of connecting and changing, exchanging data with other devices and systems uh, over the internet. So basically, imagine that um, if everything, yeah, the things can communicate uh, to each other, not just people can communicate, but also the things. Yeah? So this is uh, how they communicate is over the internet. So that's why we call it internet of things that connecting um, of things um, over the internet. So you can use it in, in any kind of um, potential application like bio biometric uh, security systems, water quality monitoring, air monitoring, irrigation systems in farming, because currently people are using um, manual um, data collection. Yeah? Manually, you, you take it like in-situ measurement or in-situ monitoring to collect the data. But now, if we use uh, the Internet of Things, so the sensors will collect the data for you on a timely basis as we set uh, the frequency of the um, of the data collection. So the IoT consists of the things or the devices, which can be the sensors. Yeah, It could, for example, think of um, air quality monitoring system. It could be the temperature, yeah, or the PM meter, particulate meter, particulate matter meter. And then uh, to transmit the data over the internet, you will go through the gateway. And to store the data, you will go through the cloud server. Yeah, basically, this is uh, the server where the database is stored. And from the collected data, we can do analytics uh, to especially to estimate and predict uh, the data in the future. And we can display it on a user interface, or we call it also as dashboard. So it's uh, the same thing. So dashboard is, is, a, is a site where you can see the values uh, of the data. So from these three um, connected, uh, the, the three elements is now we can summarize it in terms of the census itself, where it sends uh, the data, and then we have the connectivity to connect uh, the data over the internet, 
uh, and the gateway will be the element that transmits it to the uh, cloud. Yeah, uh, and we also have data analytics uh, and user interface um, to visualize the data. So why do we need this, uh, especially now in the era of uh, 5G and beyond and 6G and IR 4.0? Uh, it's because uh, from the IoT system, we can get faster and accurate uh, analytics decision. We want to make an informed decision. Like, for example, if you are monitoring the air quality, um, for example, if you're working with the Department of Environment, you want to know what is the, 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 uh, the air quality um, in the whole country at the moment so that you can make informed decisions uh, regarding um, you know like regarding the disaster management steps or um, or you know you want to move uh, the people in the area over to the other to, to, to the other location yeah as as uh, occupational and safety measures Minimize human efforts in many life aspects. Uh, you know, uh, during the lockdown, we couldn't go out. We couldn't go anywhere remotely. Um, so through the IoT, the, once we install the system, uh, the sensors are there and it can communicate. It can transmit the data on a, on a more frequent basis. So you can view the data even you are not physically there. Yeah, this is what we call as um, real life or real time monitoring. Um, efficient resource utilization and of course we want to get better quality of life and even for example in um, in um, if you have like a like a smart watch yeah like a smart watch what smart watch that can monitor your heart rate your steps your movement uh, and it can keep uh, the analytics of your health and if uh, the system triggers um, uh, I remember there is one issue one news where the person collapsed and then the, the smartwatch triggers um, the last uh, the last call number and it happens to be his wife and then uh, the wife then called the emergency number 999 so the, the hospital or the emergency response team can come over and help this person so you know all this uh, by using the IoT system or IoT concept from the sensors uh, to the data analytics and to the response system or to the uh, early warning system in disaster management so um, I will talk about uh, this use case number one, uh, which is uh, for peatland monitoring. Yeah, peatland is basically um, a kind of um, forest, one type of forest, especially in the tropical region. We have mango forest, we have mango uh, peatland forest, we have uh, tropical forest. So how we monitor the peatland forest using the IoT. Uh, so this will be the first uh, use case uh, that I'm going to present. Uh, it is a recorded version. So um, I hope that you can get some ideas on how uh, the IoT system is deployed. And without further ado, Prof. Adewati, the stage is yours. Okay, thanks a lot, uh, Dr. Faiz. So I'm just sharing my slides here. Um, I hope you can see my PowerPoint. Yes. Thank you for the introduction. Uh, so thanks a lot to the organizer, especially I trade Malaysia uh, Committee Joint Chapter for inviting me. Uh, so just now I I heard that you guys have uh, listened from uh, listened a talk from uh, Mr. Shamri. He is a good friend of mine. I mean, uh, he's our vendor uh, basically. So uh, you can hear from the vendor point of view, and then now uh, you can hear from a researcher point of view. In fact, um, the 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 deployment of IoT that I'm going to present uh, in a few minutes after this is based on um, LoRaNet's uh, deployment. Yeah, because LoRaNet is our vendor. So this is the talk um, all about. Uh, the title is when Pitland meets LoRa and data. So what am I going to cover is um, how, if you remember Transboundary Haze episode in 2019, especially, yeah, uh, we had Transboundary Haze uh, episode uh, in ASEAN uh, region. So Indonesia, Malaysia, Brunei, Singapore, we are all affected uh, in, in 2019. And we had quite a bout of um, Transboundary Haze episodes almost every year before this. But Alhamdulillah, this year we don't have any. So hopefully it will stay that way. So um, this Transboundary Haze, uh, one of the reason is a uh, peatland forest fire. 
yeah, whether intentionally or unintentionally from human activities or from drought season. So from this scenario, we come up with a way to monitor uh, pit and forest fires. And how do we do that? Is by deploying uh, IoT system. So IoT to complement the existing uh, manual pitland data collection. So um, specific to the technical part, we are promoting and uh, developing cost effective IoT system. So how do we do that is what I'm going to uh, present after this. Um, that is in terms of cost effectiveness, but also we are trying to make sure that the whole forest, pitland forest of interest is covered within the coverage area of the IoT system. So how do we do that is by using LoRa. And from the collection of, um, of pitland data over time, because once we deploy the IoT system, it can be collecting data uh, whatever frequency that we set it every two minutes or every half an hour or every hour so it will be there in the database in our cloud server so how are we going or what are we going to do with this and data so this is what what's the story basically what's what what, what i'm going to present today um okay so before this project is uh, entitled napc ne ne uh, networked asian pitland uh, forest communities funded by nict japan eh? nict is um, like the ee arm yeah electric electronics uh, research arm of the government of japan so we got the funding alhamdulillah in 2018 and before this project yeah before napc we know that um the transboundary his episode uh, if, if you can remember this uh, from jambi in indonesia the sky was yellow yellow orange and red because of the because of the particles because of the haze and because of the position of the sun etc so the 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 view was very red and then even in malaysia and in brunei we had this uh, experience so what we uh, did in this uh, project is that we consider three countries, Malaysia, oops, Malaysia, Indonesia and Brunei, uh, uh, three ASEAN countries and then funded by NICT Japan. So NICT um, is also part of the member. So we chose three peatland forests, uh, which is Raja Musa Forest Reserve in Kuala Selangor for Malaysia, um, Jambi, yeah, East Tanjung Jabung in Jambi, Sumatra in uh, Indonesia, and Badas in Brunei. So these three peatland forests are our site, yeah, our um, our site of uh, deployment of IoT deployment. So the idea is for these three peatland forests to be connected or integrated in terms of data. Uh, pitland data uh, visualization and integration so this is what we did so the iot system is replicated in all the three uh, pitland forests so existingly or currently um, raja musa forest reserve is under the purview of uh, selangor forestry department so this uh, we call it jpns jabatan perhutanan negeri selangor jpns has been monitoring the pitland forest very well uh, because uh, it it has its um its episodes of uh, pitland forest fires before in 2013 in 2014 but after that they really monitor uh the, the pitland forest they do uh, data collection of groundwater level so groundwater level is uh, the water depth in the soil so if you can see here uh, the lowest uh, level of uh, the groundwater level, meaning that uh, the water content in the soil is very low. So you can see here, for example, in uh, March and in July, yeah, in July, August, something like that. So when it is really low, there is a risk of fire hazard. Sometimes because the pit soil is not the same as the normal soil. Pitland forest is not the same as any tropical forest. The, the soil content is very susceptible to uh, fires, especially like sometimes when people were fishing, they were smoking and they threw the cigarette butt yeah, unintentionally outside, but it can burn uh, the pitland forest underneath the soil. So you don't see the fires uh, in front of you, but it's actually burning inside. So from that scenario, we met uh, JPNS and then they advised us probably you can deploy this um, POC uh, pro uh, uh, POC prototype of, uh, uh, I don't know, but the prototype, right? the prototype in these uh, high risk areas, if you can see the red area. So after much deliberation and discussion with JPNS, we decided to deploy our IoT here. Uh, so the, the sensors, uh, we call it as piezometer here. And then this is uh, the, you can, you can see it as a transmitter. And we had our receiver, LoRa receiver or LoRa gateway here. 
So from the ground, uh, where the sensors, the ground sensors are connected to the um, gateway uh, in the tower block because we want to get large coverage. So we put it um, on a tower. So the distance between the, the sensors and the uh, gateway here is around 100 meters. And um, we use LoRa. So this this is uh, what the uh, title, the talk is all about. So we use LoRa uh, because it's um, cost effective, it's free basically, and it can cover um, this uh, pitland forest through some um, configurations that I'm going to present after this. So this is what the deployment uh, is all about, as I have explained just now. So we have the tower, not tower block, sorry, just the, the tower. Uh, the, the tower consists of the gateway and we have two sensor nodes or we have two receivers if you can so, uh, call it so we have sensor node one and sensor node two which consists of the groundwater level uh, sensor which is basically just the piezometer and we also have sensors for the soil moisture and soil temperature so these three uh, ground data and yeah? groundwater level uh, soil moisture and soil temperature deployed in the in the in the ground and yeah, deployed in the soil as the ground sensors and then connected uh, to the LoRa gateway here in the tower. So you can see here, this is our sensor node. Uh, this is our LoRa node, yeah? this is LoRa node. And then this is the LoRa gateway and this is a uh, weather station. So this is uh, the, the, the groundwater level that, that we, um, we integrate with the communication module, which is uh, the LoRa module. And we also have one actuator uh, for the water pump so that we can actuate, uh, we can trigger the water pump if it is too dry and the groundwater level is too low, meaning that the area is very dry and prone to um, forest fire, then we can actuate, uh, we can trigger the, the water pump to inundate the area with water. Oops, sorry. So from this um, deployment, uh, we are promoting cost effective because everyone was asking, especially the the, the forest uh, forest rangers, they say that oh, how much is the cost of this IoT system? Because um, we had this um, scenario when it was uh, the lockdown, yeah, in March 2020, we couldn't go there. We couldn't go there, but luckily the system is already deployed and we can see the data coming in yeah, um, anywhere, anywhere in the world, in fact. And we are, like, for example, I'm living in uh, Bangi, I can still see the data coming in so I can estimate or, or monitor uh, the progress of the groundwater level. So this is uh, the deployment. So what we did to um, make sure that it is cost effective, yeah, and still um, giving us the quality of service that we have been uh, expecting. So we use um, LoRa optimization technique, especially to uh, configure the, the LoRa transmission. So this is also with the help of uh, Shamri and uh, our colleagues in LoRaNet. Huh? We uh, take into consideration the parameters, the transmission parameters such as data rate, uh, spreading factor, yeah, uh, data rate and spreading factor. So we test, we test this uh, and then we try to find out uh, what is the best, best configuration uh, in terms of uh, data rate and uh, spreading factor. So you can see our work, yeah, you can read further if you want to know more details from this uh, paper. It has been published, alhamdulillah, in CIIS. So you can uh, just go to this um, link to download and to get um, information from the paper. So it is a collaboration between UPM and MIMOS uh, from Malaysia as mission partners, as well as um, uh, our partners from NICT uh, Japan. So what we did is we tried to make sure that this uh, LoRa transmission from the transmitter, as, uh, yeah, from the transmitter, which is the ground sensors, to the receiver, which is the uh, LoRa gateway, uh, in several land uses, they call it land use, land uses in the um, in the Pitland Forest, in Raja Musa Forest. So we went to um, seven locations, if you can see here, location one, location two, location three. So location one is the tower uh, itself, location two is this like a nursery, location three is uh, more like a um, uh, palm oil plantation, location four is uh, like uh, small bushes like this, Location five is um, a mining area. Okay. Location six is also similar to location four, which is uh, small bushes. And location seven is like uh, the, the road, yeah, the laterite um, road. So we, we tested 
flora uh, transmission according to this seven situation and we see how far um, LoRa transmission can go according to this uh, propagation models uh, in combination we call it as propagation model but for the uh, forestry um, experts they call it as land use so basically it's a uh, almost the same thing yeah so land use is the type of um, land that we are we are testing so we, we take into consideration the the terrain the terrain of the um, area and the vegetation especially because uh, we know that the we know that the um, ground sensor has antenna but the antenna has to be higher than the peatland trees so the peatland trees, there are, you know, all this kind of uh, pokok, tengget burung lah, all those peatland trees. It's not as dense as um, tropical forest, the one that people go for hiking, like, for example. But it still, it can scatter the signal. So we still observe the attenuation. So what we did is some areas, there are line of sight between uh, the transmitter and the receiver. So we tested this using... Um, we tested this using um, what is this? Using uh, four-wheel drive, yeah, uh, between the transmitter and the receiver. So we noticed that there are areas which has line of sight to the tower where the LoRa gateway is uh, located. Uh, there are also some near line of sight when the when the height uh, of the transmitter and the receiver can still see, but uh, of course there is some estimation but some of them is uh, non line of sight totally uh, because of the height and the uh, vegetation of the area okay so um from here we plot we plot uh, the receive signal uh, the rssi yeah, the receive signal as a function of distance because uh, the locations from one until seven we plot it uh, also according to the distance and we test it according to the LoRa channel yeah uh, and we test our SNL as well so what we notice that this design parameter spreading factor data rate the distance between transmitter and receiver it can be configured uh, to get an improved LoRa transmission meaning that if we can get lower uh, packet loss rate so you, you can find more uh, information here in this paper and we are also extending this study uh, inshallah to be published in a journal um, later okay so that is in terms of LoRa part yeah, uh, where we optimize the transmission using cost-effective technology, which is LoRa. So now we are looking into the data part. So the data after we have collected uh, over time, the IoT system is already in place and uh, we notice that, okay, it is transmitting. We get good data um, frequently. So next is what are we going to do with the data itself, the peatland data? So automatically it is stored uh, in our cloud server. So from here, uh, we try to integrate with the water pump room. So this is the, the water pump room. Uh, so this is the pump. So it is a little bit um, like maybe around 700 meters away from the tower, if you can go to this uh, uh, peatland forest. So this water pump, this is how it looks like. Uh, this is the deployment. So this one is around, I think, 700 to uh, 1,000 meter away. It is still in the in the same pit and forest. So if we could include um, potential actuation, yeah, uh, from the water pump. So um, like for example, from the from our dashboard or from the telegram, the forest ranger can trigger the water pump once they 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 observe that the peatland data especially the groundwater level is lower than the threshold value okay so this is this is on the cps part the the cyber physical system so what we did is um from the groundwater level yeah, we have groundwater level we have the soil moisture we have the soil temperature we have the uh, weather related data so we did a machine learning process uh, and then we we could display it in a on a dashboard, and again this is uh, this work is also presented in this particular conference, um, which we will present inshallah in November. But it is already available if you want to uh, read more information about it. So what we did is uh, from the collected peatland data, we did um, machine learning to estimate uh, the next hour or next day water level. Yeah, so uh, we are targeting the green 
sorry, the groundwater level. So this is the uh, fire risk codes uh, we obtained from the Global Environment Center, uh, an NGO that we have been working with. So thank you, NGEC, for providing this. So for example, the, the extreme case is this one, when it is red. So it is red when, when it is less than um, minus 700 millimeter. Minus here means that it is lower than the surface of the soil. So if it is less than uh, minus 700, yeah, uh, or 0 0.7, minus 0 0.7 meter, it, it is considered as extreme case. Uh, so it should be an alert, yeah, especially for the um, for the forest rangers, for the local community, for the fire departments uh, to be aware of a potential uh, forest fire. So we have this, and then we we try to um, use uh, machine learning. Yeah, uh, to estimate um, uh, the groundwater level in the next hour as well as in the next day. So you can see here RMSE uh, for the next hour, of course, when we are estimating um, uh, very near future, the, the, the error is less compared to when we are estimating for next day. Um, uh, the, the RMSE or for the next day. So we have this based on the two uh, sensor nodes that we have deployed. Uh, so this is also an ongoing work. Uh, we, we are trying to get uh, longer and longer data. And then uh, if we could make more estimation, perhaps uh, next week, if we could estimate next week, or we, if we could estimate next month with a certain degree of, um, of uh, error or probability of uh, error. So this is what we are trying to do. Um, now, I mean, it's, a, it's an ongoing um, process, yeah, uh, but the initial one is, is the one that we have published in this paper. Uh, you, you guys are always welcome to read and give comments. So I think that is all from me, um, uh, Dr. Faiz. Uh, so this is a promotional video of this uh, project. Alhamdulillah, this project is uh, well promoted uh, in the social media as well as in the printed media. Uh, and we are hoping to get more collaborations. We invite all of you to collaborate with us. And we're also looking into um, engagement with uh, the stakeholders. And this project, Alhamdulillah, also um, has been uh, awarded quite, uh, quite, quite handsomely, I must say. Uh, we, we, we won a silver award in MTE 2021, uh, as well as International Award of Merit by the Malaysia Crosser Technology Exchange. And uh, it has been displayed by KPT. Uh, Ministry of Higher Education under its uh, Festival of Ideas, FOI, they call it FOI, uh, to show the collaboration between academia, uh, which is UPM, and the GRI, which is MIMOS, as well as uh, the stakeholders. In this case, uh, it was uh, Selangor Forestry Department uh, and also GEC. And then this project also won an award, one of the papers that I presented just now, uh, won an award uh, at the Best Paper Presentation Award in CIIS Conference. Uh, and from this project, uh, I applied for US um, ASEAN Prize for Women. Uh, Alhamdulillah, I got through until uh, regional level. Uh, I was one of the regional finalists, but I did not win uh, the award. I just uh, won the honorable mention, the, the number two. Uh, the winner was um, Dr. Lee here from A-Star Singapore. But that's okay. It's a good promotion for the project because um, the IoT can help uh, the environmental monitoring, uh, especially in this case, it's transboundary haze. Probably people forget about transboundary haze. Now everyone was working with, uh, you know, uh, trying to address the pandemic issues because it is more pressing. But it can happen anytime and anywhere, uh, especially in our region. So it's good that once uh, the system is in place, we can keep monitoring. Uh, it can keep triggering and alerting uh, the stakeholders. So once it is needed, then it is ready. So I truly believe in that rather than uh, we have reactive. It's better to, to have proactive uh, conditions. So this is what we've been telling our stakeholders. So it is not like um, it can be used every day. It can be needed every day, but the, the groundwork will be there all along. Uh, so once we need it, it is ready. I think that's all. Um, Dr. Faiz, and this is also another promotional and media coverage on the project. 
and uh, just an acknowledgement to um, our funding body, which is uh, NICT Japan, uh, collaboration with um, our partners in Indo Indonesia, Brunei, as well as uh, NIMOS. And this is also funded in terms of uh, capacity building, especially on trainings for the IoT by Erasmus Plus uh, project called Shift. Thank you. Thank you very much, Prof. Adawati. Yes, uh, we have one question over here. Let me put it on the stage uh -huh. by Muhammad Aiman uh, from College Kemahiran Tinggi Marab Taling Jaya. So the, the question is, uh, what is the next step and future expansion for this NAPC project? Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you, Aiman. Aiman has been interested with this project uh, for a while. Eh? Maybe we can meet up, Aiman, uh, now that UPM is open. Um, yeah, uh, the project has ended. I mean, the NAPC project has ended. Actually, it got extended until 30th of uh, June 2021. But now we are applying for uh, other grants, uh, the APT, as a Pacific Tidy Community, as well as um, ASEAN EVO itself, uh, the, the one from NICT. So what we plan to do is, uh, before this, NAPC was looking into the IoT system the deployment of the IoT system, how to make it cost effective, how to make it um, covering all the peatland uh, forests in the area. So now the next stage is uh, the data part. So we have the peatland data. So what are we going to do about it? So basically data analytics will be central next. So this is one, one, one um, area. And another area is if we could integrate this with um, the alert system that is acceptable in the in the region especially. So we've been talking with uh, Met Malaysia on the fire danger rating system or FDRS because FDRS has been in place not only in the country but all over the world. If you notice that uh, in the last summer, um, Greece, Australia, even the United States, they experienced a huge forest fires, like uh, terrible forest fires that so many people uh, died. So if we could integrate this uh, groundwater level that is from the ground sensors, because MDRS is based on the satellite imaging data, if we could integrate the two uh, between uh, satellite uh, imaging as well as the groundwater groundwater level from the ground sensors, we, if we could integrate the two, if we could improve um, the FD, FDRS parameters, they have quite a number of parameters, FWI, blah, 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 whatsoever. So if we could integrate the two, then it will be good uh, to alert the local community as well as to the uh, stakeholders. Yeah, that's, that's all. Uh, yeah. Okay, yes, uh, thank you very much, uh, Prof. So any more questions? Uh, maybe one from me. So uh, this looking back, at the start of the project so mm -hmm. how actually prof uh, do what to be able to get multiple uh, agencies and funding oh. from japan and then uh, looking at uh, what interests you to to go for this for this project looking at uh, pitlands uh, fire mm -hmm. and so on so what will be the impetus at the at the start of the project mm -hmm. like motivation eh? yeah um Previously, uh, I was looking into um, disaster management. So we are looking into how we could use uh, mobile and satellite communications for disaster management. And uh, But I couldn't get through, especially on funding. And you know how research without funding is very difficult to move. And then in 2017, I presented in Asen Evo, but got declined. <laughs> it got rejected. Mm -hmm. But 2018, when we have uh, when we had uh, Prof. Brohan, so Prof. Brohan stepped in. He said that, okay, let me try. So Prof. Brohan brought rope in um, Prof. Ainuddin and Dr. Shareza, which is from INTROP. INTROP is an uh, Institute of Tropical Agriculture in UPM, and there are experts in forestry. So we target peatland specifically because it was always an issue about peatlands. It's not the same as uh, typical um, tropical forest, typical tropical forest, like for example. Uh, we engineers sometimes we don't know what's the difference between peatland forest and mangrove forest. Yeah, uh, in Malay it's uh, paya bakau and paya gambut. We don't know what is the difference even for engineers, but for the forest forest uh, people, for the forestry experts, it is huge difference. Like uh, like the sky and the land. Um, so peatland forest is more susceptible. Peatland forest is the one on the land. Mangrove is the one near the sea. If you can notice, uh, mangrove is the one with the paya bakau, with the trees, with protruding, um, protruding. Akar, what is akar? Eh? 
roots, <laughs> protruding roots, <laughs> protruding roots in in mangrove. But for peatland, no, it's it's like the normal trees of this uh, pokok tengek burung, like small trees, but still it can go high up until three meters. So we see there is a potential to integrate um, IoT with the manual uh, peatland data collection. And uh, alhamdulillah, so far the um, the stakeholders, especially JPNS, they have been very, um, very cooperative with this in uh, providing assistance. Yeah, because we really want to help them. But if I can highlight the challenge, uh, because this is multinational projects, when we have the data, we need to do some data governance process mm. because uh, some of the country may not want to um, share sensitive, highly sensitive data. So we have, we need to have a level of access, level for the admin level, level for the um, researcher, for example, for the researchers, for the stakeholders, or maybe for the public. So this is where we are also looking into apart from data analytics, but also data governance. So essentially, data will be central in the next uh, course of actions, uh, I'm going to say. But uh, I would like to invite you guys to watch this uh, promotional video um, so that you can have a uh, better understanding uh, on the project. Uh, Prof, uh, maybe after this, Prof can put the the link to our to our chat. If, ah, sure, sure. Uh, I can do that yeah. now if you want. Uh, yeah. Hold on. Let me just... Or oh, do we have time to play it? Uh, yes, I think we have until 10.30 for our session. Therefore, okay. we have another 12 minutes. Yeah, maybe. Uh, so, so maybe I can uh, play yeah. it then. Um, okay. Uh, can you see the YouTube? Uh, yes, we can see. And however. It's still. Can you hear it? Uh, cannot hear prof i think because of maybe when at first when you want to share is that uh -huh. okay let me just you need try to again click whether share. there is an option to 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 add system uh, sound or computer oh share sound same like audio okay, okay 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 I'll, I'll try that again Can you hear it now? Yes. Saya Duati dari WIPNET Fakulti Kejuteraan UPM. Uh, projek ini uh, bertajuk NAPC, Network ASEAN Pitland Forest Communities, dibayai oleh Nasiti Jepun uh, dan kolaborasi antara UPM, MIMOS uh, di Malaysia dan juga uh, IPB, Institu uh, University Pertanian Bogor dan BPPT di Indonesia dan uh, di Brunei kita ada UTB, University Technology Brunei. So tiga negara, Malaysia, Brunei dan Indonesia, um, kami akan melaksanakan IoT-based treatment monitoring ya, yeah, untuk memantau uh, paya gambut uh, di negara kami. So di Malaysia kita telah mengenal pasti hutan simpan ataupun hutan paya gambut di Raja Musa ni di Kuala Selangor untuk kita pasang IoT system uh, supaya kita dapat pantau ke kedalaman air di dalam tanah uh, paya gambut. So di atas ni kita ada weather station, ya, station cuaca dan juga alat-alat um, um, LoRa untuk transmission ataupun um, uh, penghantaran isyarat daripada sensor di bawah, ya, di dalam paya gambut. 
um, ke uh, ke gateway dan juga radio station dan kita hantar ke cloud di cloud itu kita akan push kepada control center so control center akan berada di UPM uh, ataupun di Mimos uh, dan ada juga cloud server yang kita parkkan kepada NSCT Jepun so ada beberapa tempat yang kita storekan data ini dan data yang uh, diterima kita gunakan untuk ramalan kepada um, kebakaran hutan Kebakaran hutan ini kalau dari segi skala besar akan menyebabkan jerbu dan macam ni kita tahu pada tahun 2019 jerbu yang teruk berlaku di Malaysia bukan sahaja di Malaysia tapi juga di Indonesia dan Brunei. Uh, so kita diharapkan dapat uh, daripada IoT sistem ini akan dapat uh, mengawal dan juga mengawasi um, hutan payah gambut daripada kebakaran. Saya akan explain apa main components of our system ni so dekat sini kita ada dua uh, sistem dua item yang pertama ini kita panggil sebagai weather station lah so fungsi weather station ni dia akan mengambil data berkenaan hujan temperature, humidity dan uh, uh, wind direction dan ada beberapa perkara lain lah sebab apa data ni penting data ni akan memberi Uh, maksud berkenaan keadaan semasa cuaca di kawasan ni dan dari data ni kita boleh buat analisis dan predict lah sama ada akan berlaku kebakaran risiko kebakaran tu tinggi dan sebagainya dan ini pula adalah dipanggil LoRa Gateway so LoRa Gateway ni mem, uh, apa fungsi dia adalah dia akan mengumpul data-data daripada sensor yang kita pasang di bawah dan sensor ni kita, kelebihan dia kita boleh pasang sensor Uh, sehingga 5 km. So di kawasan yang tak ada mobile coverage kita boleh pasang dan dia akan capture uh, data daripada sensor tu setiap 15 minit dan dia akan proses dan kita akan hantar ke uh, cloud lah. Dan ni adalah antena dia kalau kita tengok bahagian atas ni. So antena ni boleh cover up to 5 km. actually is developing the platform we have developed the platform by using uh, Mimos uh, my miss uh, platform and up from there we process a data and to display uh, to be used for the uh, ranges some data to be used for, uh, by them in uh, managing this uh, forest reserve at the meantime also we provide the uh, alert uh, whenever a system uh, trigger any uh, anomaly or something uh, wrong uh, to be sent directly to a dashboard as well as to the end user uh, for mobile phone. Dulu uh, pemantauan yang dijalankan di kawasan uh, Hutan Simpara Jumusa ni kita melakukan pemantauan uh, kebakaran ini dengan mengadakan uh, rondaan di kawasan-kawasan ini dan juga kita juga membuat uh, pemantauan menggunakan piezometer secara manual uh, di sini. Sekarang ini kita di kawasan uh, Raja Musa ini telah uh, menggunakan sistem IoT iaitu uh, sistem yang telah dibangunkan oleh uh, UPM dan MIMOS uh, apa yang uh, kita dapati bahawa dengan menggunakan sistem ini uh, memberi maklum, maklumat secara terus kepada kepada pengguna lah eh, pada pengguna dan uh, ia memberikan uh, uh, amaran dan juga uh, tindakan yang lebih awal uh, untuk kita uh, mengawal kebakaran jadi uh, sistem ini sangat berguna sangat mempercepatkan dan mempermudahkan uh, pemantauan dan juga pengawalan kebakaran.
Okay, so um, so that is how we use um, the IoT for then monitoring, patent and performance monitoring. Uh, I hope you can get some idea. If you want to uh, discuss more about it, if you want to know more information, then please let us know. Uh, we, are, we are open for any potential collaboration. So apart from the pigment forest, we also deploy IoT uh, in mangrove monitoring because pigment and forest, there are uh, pigment and mangrove uh, forest, there are like uh, twins, yeah? <laughs> twins of, uh, of different time. Uh, one is in the land, pigment is in the land, mangrove is uh, always at the coastal area. Uh, and also mangrove is one of the main forest uh, in Malaysia. So in this um, use case number two is uh, from a project entitled Sustainable Aquatic Resource Management in Mangrove Ecosystems via Internet of Things Application or META. It is a project funded by uh, the EU uh, through the Asia Connect team initiative and it is a collaboration between UPM and all other universities all over the world in Asia as well as in the EU. So um, this collaboration yeah, uh, in Malaysia it is um, led by MyREN. So this Asia Connect and TEN is a network of um, large research and education network yeah, interconnecting universities and research centers in the Asia Pacific. So in Malaysia, we have MIREN, which is Malaysia Research and Education Network. Um, and in Europe, they have Ghent, yeah, connecting Ghent network with 40 million European researchers and academics. So through this um, high speed network, uh, we can have more collaboration. So these are the countries and the universities involved in the project. Uh, it, the eight, there are eight countries, seven international universities, and four local universities. So you can find more information in our website, uh, in this uh, Meta website. Yeah, you can click on this link, and uh, this is our social media. So we are on YouTube, uh, Facebook, as well as. Um, Mm, yeah, but, uh, Insta, Instagram, yeah, the Instagram, so you can find more information, our activities, and we have one um, mangrove forest of interest specifically, uh, it's called Sijangka mangrove forest, so Sijangka is uh, around one hour drive from UPM, uh, it is in uh, Selangor still, um, in the west, west of Selangor, so it is a mangrove forest, initially it was a, dam a dump, uh, dumping area, uh, the the person who is in charge, uh, the local community, they said that it was a drive through the dumping area, but the community was um, determined to change it to a recreational area. So they changed it from this dumping area to a mangrove rec recreational park um, in Sijangkang. So this is uh, the entrance. It's very nice. If you have the chance to visit the place, please do. Uh, we can bring you there. And you can see how this from a landfill, from a dumping area, it, it is converted into a recreational park. So it got very much support from the community, from the industry, from the um, from the companies, from the GLCs yeah, to improve the area. So you can see all these mangrove trees and there is a canopy forest walkway, very nice um, area. And uh, you can see the, the unique uh, mangrove trees um, in this recreational park. So what we did uh, through this meta project is we deploy IoT system uh, here in the uh, recreational park in Sejangkang. So we have here, uh, if you can see, this is the LoRa gateway. Um, and this is the LoRa gateway and the weather station. Uh, and we also have the environmental sensor, yeah, which is the, the, the weather station here, okay, which is basically this thing when we enlarge this and this is the water level sensor we uh, wrap it or stuck it to a mangrove tree so that we can find uh, it is an ultrasonic sensor where we can determine the the height of the water level so basically it's uh, determining the water level in the area as well as a temperature and humidity sensor also uh, strapped on a mangrove tree so in the future inshallah the project still have a few months left we hope to deploy all this um, uh, sensors yeah, uh, to monitor the mangrove tree growth, the soil temperature, soil humidity, soil moisture, 
And then we also hope to deploy a high definition camera to monitor the wildlife in the area, especially they have this very unique uh, crabs, yeah, uh, small crabs, so red in colors, red and orange uh, in the area and also other wildlife. Right, uh, so currently we have um, uh, deployed the sensor and we also managed to get a dashboard so you can see here uh, you can always go here go to this site it's uh, currently uh, freely available uh, before we set uh, an admin level to access it so it is uh, currently because we have um, some basic sensors especially from the environmental sensors that we deployed just now that i shown you so we have a uh, temperature versus humidity uh, we also have solar radiation and air pressure so in the future we will have more data um, and then it can be displayed on this dashboard so from this um, deployment eh, from these two use cases that we have we have had uh, some experience from from the two projects so we noticed that these are the challenges uh, that, that, that that we encountered uh, especially in terms of security and privacy so, so some people were saying that is this iot going to replace the manual monitoring system is this going to replace me as a person uh, like that some people will say that it's uh, for example the the local community has been collecting the data then suddenly it is replaced by all these uh, sensors is it going to replace me so they, they have this insecurity so it is our challenge uh, to tell them that it is not replacing of course it will never replace uh, the the manual collection data data collection but it is complementing we still need to go there manually to take in situ measurement because we need to do data validation yeah um and of course when we get the data who will own the data who can share the data who can view the data so all this in terms of uh, security and privacy as well as uh, we call it also as data governance uh, to have the level of access of this data some data can be sensitive highly sensitive you may not want to share it with the public for example or some data it is okay yeah after some processing etc you can display it um, over the dashboard for example yeah so this is this is some challenges that we, we encountered but uh, of course it is solvable through meetings with the stakeholders uh, meeting with the local community and get feedback from them as long as we uh, consider all comments yeah and issues from from all relevant parties um, and then we also notice uh, issue on connectivity but so far this has been well um, solved because uh, we are using LoRa, which is cost effective. It is uh, using free frequency spectrum. So the price is reduced already. And then uh, the connectivity is in terms of the land use or the propagation model in the area. Some trees, it is so high or dense, the vegetation is so dense that the transmission from the ground sensor yeah, on the ground to the gateway uh, is uh, attenuated. So we have to find out where exactly is the best place to install the sensors. So this is some connectivity issues. Um, and also we, we, we store all our data in the cloud service. Yeah, so um, we need to do some data analytics to make sure that the data is feasible for the normal people. For people like uh, engineers, maybe they, they just see the data they can understand it but but we need to translate the data so that the normal people the public the stakeholders can understand it yeah and also we notice that some of the sensors um once we deploy it for example in in uh, salt water or in the ground the quality may deteriorate over time so we need to ensure that the sensors are well um well calibrated well maintained so it can be used over a long time so eventually you still have to do data validation manually and you still have to do um uh data verification is the the data collected from the iot system is it the same is it validated with the manual data so you have to do that on a frequent basis you just don't deploy the system and then just leave it there no sometimes they may give erroneous value uh, and also complexity of course when we have uh, more and more sensors connected so you have to maintain you have to consider um, the development and then uh, you have to do all this uh, calibration and maintenance so, so all these are into the challenges of the iot system 
Okay, so in conclusion, we see that huge um, potential in IoT for environmental monitoring, especially here in our country, where in tropical region, the trees are our, our, our um, we call it as our uh, treasure, it's our treasure. We don't want to leave the trees or leave the forest for you know some illegal logging or some uh, potential forest fires we want to avoid that we want to make sure that our forests are well kept well maintained well protected so how do we do this is is also apart from the manual monitoring and management we can also use technology to help uh, this environmental management uh, to make a sustainable uh, living yeah so it's always like um, all the, the forest, actually a treasure where it holds uh, the ecosystem. It has the wildlife, yeah? in wildlife, the trees, the vegetation that is unique only to this part of the world. So this is where we really have to preserve and conserve um, uh, our forests. Okay, so I think that's all from us. Thank you. So please feel free to contact us if you have any questions. Uh, this is our email address, the website and Instagram. And we really hope that the project can reach out to the community, to the public, especially these two projects, um, the, the Pitland, uh, we call it NAPC, and the Mangrove, we call it Meta projects. Thank you. Okay.